Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. In this video I'm going to take you through Snowflake's classic web UI and give you a whistle stop tour of all the features and functionality that you're going to need to get started. This can be quite daunting for new users who are using Snowflake and have never seen it before. The web based UI takes a little bit of getting used to but once you know where to go and where all the features and functionality are it becomes a lot easier to work with. And don't forget guys if you find you're getting good value from this channel I'll be constantly bringing out new content for different levels of competency, some advanced stuff, some more basic stuff for beginners like this particular video. But if you do find it useful, please hit the like button, subscribe and get the bell icon to be notified of new content which is coming weekly. And so without further ado, let's get into the demo. Welcome to this quick overview of Snowflake's classic web UI. We can just log in. <clears throat> Once you've logged into the Snowflake web UI, you can create and manage all Snowflake objects, including virtual warehouses, databases, and all database objects. You can also use the interface to load limited amounts of data into tables, execute ad hoc queries, and perform other DML and DDL operations, as well as view and pass queries. And the interface is where you can change your Snowflake user password and specify other preferences, such as your email address. Let's start with the database page. You can access that by clicking up here, Databases. This page shows you information about the databases you've created or have privileges to access. Tasks you can perform in this page if you have necessary privileges include creating, cloning or dropping a database or transferring the ownership of a database to a different role. In addition, you can click the name of a database to view and perform tasks on the objects within the database. So for example, if I click on the time travel database, you can see I've got two tables in here. Do not drop and do not drop version two. I can click on one of those I can get my column names and my data types and if and various other information about the table on there. I can also click load table, which we'll do a little bit later in the program, and that allows you to load data into this table via this web UI. I can also look at any views if they exist in here, and you'll by default you'll see a list of the information schema views that ship with Snowflake, as well as any schemas, stages, file formats, sequences and any pipes if they exist. To create a database, we can just go back to the database pane here, click Create Database, give it a name, click Finish, and also you'll find in the web UI this handy Show SQL tooltip on most dialog boxes. Click on this, we'll give you the SQL statement, an equivalent command, so it allows you to quickly and easily enter the values in a web UI and generate the SQL in this way if you're not entirely sure of the syntax. We can close that, we can click finish and you can see we have got a test database. Next let's go to the warehouse page. This page shows information about the virtual warehouses you've created or have privilege to access. Tasks you can perform in this page include creating or dropping a warehouse, suspending or resuming a warehouse, configuring a warehouse and transferring ownership of a warehouse to a different role. Next we've got the worksheet page. This page provides a powerful interface for entering and submitting SQL queries, as well as performing DDL and DML operations, as well as viewing the results side by side as your queries operations complete. The kind of tasks you can perform in this page include running ad hoc queries, opening concurrent worksheets. You can also switch roles in Snowflake by clicking here. You can change the role your account is running under. If your account is allocated privileges to run under different roles, they will appear in here. You can pick the warehouse you want to use to attach your queries to, your database and schema as well. If you actually log out of Snowflake from this window, any active queries will stop running. You can also log out of Snowflake or switch roles within a worksheet, as well as refreshing your browser without losing your work. Your worksheets will be saved. And you can also export the result for a selected statement if the result is still available. So let's see how this works by running a simple query from our Snowflake sample database. We're going to run this query here, which is going to give us 100 records from the call center table. In here, I can click here to download my results in TSV or CSV format. I can copy all the results to a TSV format. I can also filter my results. 
So for example, if I want to filter the entire results by Mid-Atlantic, it will search all columns for that. I can also decide to show and select individual columns from the result set. And I can also open the history and get quick and easy access to the history tab. This page allows you to view and drill into the details of all queries executed in the last 14 days. This page displays a historical collection of queries, including queries executed from SnowSQL or other SQL clients. You can also filter queries displayed on the page. Here, you can abort a query that hasn't completed yet from this page as well. And by clicking on one of the query IDs, you can view the actual SQL that was executed along with the query profile. And I just want to take a couple of minutes out of the, the live demo just to make you aware of the Master and Snowflake program. There's links beneath the video if you're interested in this. We've got a number of members who are really getting good value from this at the moment. You can find all the details at masterandsnowflake.com. As I mentioned, the details below. But this is really for those people who are stuck working with on-premise legacy technology and really want to get comfortable implementing solutions in the cloud. And we cover Snowflake in real depth and it'll take you through all the way to the data architect and data engineer level as well. So if you're interested, head here. There's also, if you click on this button um, to tell me more, you can get hold of a free SnowPro Core certification guide as well. Uh, that's a PDF that will help you prepare for your SnowPro Core exam. So let's get back to the demo. To access the help menu, you have a question mark button here for the help. From here, you can view the Snowflake official documentation. You can also access the download area, which includes common drivers that you might need to use with Snowflake. And you can also click show help panel, which gives you context sensitive help for the current page. And because we're in the history and the query detail area, we can see that we get results related to the page that we're in. Next, we've got the user menu and to, to access this, you click the drop down next to your login name in the upper right hand corner. You can then change your password or security role for the session. Here, yeah. you can also use this drop down to switch languages for the user sessions. Set your email address for notifications if you're the account administrator. Log out of your current session. And you can also determine the organization, edition, cloud platform, and region of the Snowflake account you're logged into. Clicking on the shares button shows you any shares that you have set up with your environment. And we'll cover exactly what secure shares are, but it allows you to share information internally and externally with data consumers. Finally, we've got the data marketplace, but this allows you to access Snowflake's data marketplace where hundreds of companies make their data sets available either for free or as a commercially paid for product that allows you to bring that data into your Snowflake environment. And it looks and feels exactly the same as any other Snowflake database within your own environment. For now though, that's the introduction to the web UI. They're the kind of key aspects you need to know, and hopefully that will help.